The Arizona Coyotes are still in search of their first win of their 2021-2022 season as the month of October closes. The Tucson Roadrunners are on a split to their start of the season uh, this last weekend, making a split against their division rivals. And we take a look ahead to what's to come for the Arizona Coyotes this week against the Philadelphia Flyers. All that and more on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes with Robin Leano and Carl Pavlik. Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Robin Leonard, Carl Pavlik, right beside me uh, on this uh, Monday. It's November 1st. We are in officially in a new month, maybe potentially a new, like a, just a true new month for the Arizona Coyotes? Uh, maybe. Uh, I get what you're saying. Uh, with the, the changing of the month, the Coyotes went completely winless in October. Uh, now that November's starting, maybe they'll get their first wing, turn things around. Sometimes people just need uh, an excuse to get things going. Yeah, maybe maybe they do, um, but I mean, one one thing I'll say is, I mean, the team over time has looked a little bit better. Like they started, obviously, we know how they started off; it was not good, and then over yeah. time, things started to pick up. Um, what I noticed um, is the Coyotes have yet to like put everything together. They're not playing a complete game yet. Um, they do. They have shown that they can score in the past, um, but then we get games like uh, yesterday's, where they fall two one to the Carolina Hurricanes. Their offense just seems to completely dry up. Um, they're getting solid defense, um, really good, doing a good job at keeping shots to the outside, and they're finally getting really good goaltending. So hopefully, the offense can kind of kick things around um, and kind of change the way that uh, things are going. Yeah, let's 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 say that yes, yesterday the game against Carolina that one hurt a little bit because uh, Christian Fisher was the one that scored first. The Coyotes were leading yep. for a good portion of the game. Yeah, and then... <laughs> Fisher like w- with just like a lot of hard work on his line. Like Kraus was doing a lot of good work uh, to keep the zone. Takes it to Fisher, goes straight to the front of the net. You know, one zero lead. But you can't stop there. You need to keep piling on. You need to get the next goal. And that seems to be the Coyotes' problem right now, uh, getting the next goal. Yeah. Um, but let, let, let's let's say this, though. One thing that we know from and basing on not just yesterday's game, but the last couple games um, that isn't an issue at all is goaltending. It's yep. the, it is the Karel V. Melka show out there right now. Yep. It, it's definitely all the... Vic Melka, Veg Melka, uh, how, however it's pronounced, um, but he has looked solid, stood on his head. Uh, I think there were some questions about what kind of goalie he would be. Um, he's showing that he's a good one. Uh, I'm not sure if this last 82 season or 82 games, but for right now, he is carrying the load of a starter. Yeah, he is carrying the load right now, and I think there's no reason to go back to Prespitov right now. Um, I mean, if Maybe if they feel like Vemelka needs a break. Um, yeah, I'm. Th- there's like maybe give him like a single game. I think a lot of people were talking about uh, having him play against the Ducks just because that's a a lower tier team. Yeah, uh, the Coyotes have just had the the poor luck of playing some of the best teams in the NHL um, and that's, on and their let's, road trip. Let's, let's say this too: Prospetov is probably pretty familiar with some of the players in the Ducks because guess where they were just last year. Yeah. On the on the San Diego goals, so I mean that's the thing about uh, teams like LA and Anaheim. They are you know a little bit further along in their rebuild. A lot of their players were in the AHL. Um, they're kind of where the Coyotes hope to be in two to three years. Yeah, um, but so maybe maybe we'll see him there. But like, um, there's no reason. I mean, like other than that, I don't see a reason to put Provis Vatov in based off the. 
uh, momentum that we're seeing from Vemelka. I think he's doing a phenomenal job. Like he's, yeah, he's carrying he's carrying a uh, the a, a lot of the weight for the Coyotes these last few games. Um, yeah. But you know, I'll not only say that though, I say some of the defense has been great too. Like there have been moments when like the puck is sitting right in front of the crease and like it's freaking sitting there and his back is turned against because he's trying to make a he, he tried to make a save on the other side and the defense did their job they kept it out um, yeah uh i think um i've noticed shane gustus bear uh a lot like cleaning yeah. up the crease, like just getting the puck out of there uh not necessarily doing the the work of like knocking people down but making sure that like, they're not getting that rebound um defense is definitely like coming to their stride uh we're not seeing as many kind of big blowouts by the coyotes uh we're also not seeing the issue that they had for a while um where they just kind of seemed deflated after a goal against they seem to be like a little bit better mentally so i do think that they can turn things around right now offense is a really big thing and they just they need to stop taking penalties they need to stop. Like they took one too many yesterday. They took one too many against the Capitals. They just need to stop. Yeah, that one against uh, Carolina hurt when uh, uh, Jacob Chikrin took that last penalty in the last couple of minutes. It was like two thirty left, and he took and about it took zero time for Carolina yeah. to capitalize on it. And, and I mean, I will say this: the call on Chikrin was kind of weak. Uh, it wasn't the best example of a, of a cross check, I think is what he was called for. Uh, and late in hockey games, you do tend to receive like an amp up and like physical play. You see a, refs kind of put away the whistles. But even if it wasn't the most egregious penalty, Chikrin needs to know not to take that. You can't like fall for your opponent trying to goad you into a penalty because things like this happen. And that's yeah. just an, a lesson that he's going to need to learn. I mean, again, like, you know, we, we, we talk about how good Chikrin is. I mean, but we also say, I mean, look how young he is, too. Like, he's still got a whole freaking career ahead of him. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, he's still, got a lot to, he's still got a lot to learn. Yeah. He still has a lot to learn about, like, playing the game. He has a lot to learn about being the defenseman um, because he, he never was that. Uh, say what you will about Oliver ekman Larson likes play deteriorating. He was still the number one guy for the Coyotes. Mm -hmm. uh, now Chikrin is that guy, uh, and that's a lot of pressure, and that's a really tough thing to, to deal with. And I think we're kind of seeing that in his offensive numbers take a dip, where he's more focused on you know, defending against top qual quality competition. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but I think regardless of that going down, though, like, after, you know, like, even though – it was a heartbreaking game because the Coyotes were leading for a good portion of the game. I am still taking this one as like, you know what, as a, like, I don't want to say moral win. Cause like it's, it, it was still was a, the, a, the ending wasn't great. And there's a lot of things, but like, I am decent. I am decently pleased with how the team played for, portions good portions of the game again like this team has not played a 60 minute game this yeah. season at all but i've I, there were things i saw and i'm like okay this is probably the the most good stuff i could see coming together yeah um it was a lot of positive things about the game like there's a lot of good things that you can look at and they are playing against the carolina hurricanes who are the only undefeated team in the nhl right now so like the fact that it was as close as it is is maybe a little bit of a, a moral victory um and i'm fine with that um the the competition this road trip is extremely tough and if the Coyotes aren't getting points it's understandable I just hope they take that level of tenacity, like they play that way against a team like the Ducks or maybe like the Kraken, like mid tier to low tier teams, so they can get kind of wins. Like, I just, we haven't gotten a chance to see if they can do that, if they can play that quality that keeps the Carolina Hurricanes 2 1 against a, a team that they can beat with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there will have to be quite a bit to, uh, to check out on that. You know, as we obviously see how the, how the Coyotes continue their season, they still got quite a bit left um, of, the, of the year. I mean, uh, we're only nine or 
Not yeah, nine games in. Yeah, uh, haven't reached season. double digits yet. We haven't reached. The next one is on Tuesday um, when they when they face Philadelphia. That's going to be an interesting one. But we'll get to previewing that uh, later in the episode. Um, but uh, actually, we still got more to get to in this episode too, because even before we get to uh, the uh, talking about the the oh, what's coming up to the week, week, we got other things to talk about. The Tucson Roadrunners had themselves quite the week. Uh, we'll talk about what they did over the weekend in just a sec but uh first i believe carl has a little word that we can spread that i do uh let me ask you a question does this sound familiar you got one device that lets you catch the game live another that lets you stream your favorite shows you're watching sports highlights on your phone and you've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff well i want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your tv together it's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part? There's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Okay, so back here on Lockdown Coyotes, one of your number one podcasts covering the Arizona Coyotes in the state of Arizona. I'm Robin Leano Carpadlick, but once again, right beside me. Um, as we get ready to talk Tucson Roadrunners now, they had a couple games over the weekend, and uh, it was weird because I mean, I'm not sure if it's me, Carl, but I've gone to, so t- they've had two home games. I mean, they've had four home games, and I've gone to two of them, right? Sure. The first game I went to was their home opener. They won four to nothing. Yeah. The second game, I needed a day off, so I didn't go. They lost six to two. Okay. Friday, um, because not being without a car, I decided, you know what? I'm not going to go. Sure. They lost five to one. Okay. And then yes, or now two days ago on Saturday, um, uh, my, my good bud Brett Fair, who we had on the show a couple of weeks ago to preview the season, decided he, uh, you know helped helped me out and he you know gave me a ride to the game and tuned from the game, so I was able to go to the game. They won the game six to four. Okay, so I think uh, we have near definitive proof the thing that all sports fans dread. Uh, their play is not affected by you being in the stands. Uh, <laughs> clearly, we've learned this scientifically. Uh, they, uh, you are not part of any superstition, uh, as far as we know. Uh, it's possibly too early to tell, but yeah, you have no part in this. <laughs> Which, not- again, it's just... It's a horror show for every sports fan who likes to think that they are somehow in control of games. <laughs> I love making a joke about it. I really don't think that's the case. I just find it super uh, coincidence that the games I've gone to that they've won and the games I didn't, they lost. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I've had people who like go to games and they just happen to always go to winners. Um, and I envy them. Uh, because I don't yep. always go to losers. I go to a lot of games. I go to a mi- good mixture. So the losers just always stand out. Um, but they're not like an insanely over amount. They just stand out in my mind. True, true. Um, but anyways, let's talk about the weekend, this weekend. So the, it was a 5-1 loss to San Diego to start off. Obviously not good. Yosef Kojanas should not have a great start in that game. Again, I wasn't there, so I couldn't, I couldn't tell you every little thing that happened. Sure. Um, but I can tell you about Saturday's game. A lot, yeah. a lot better. Um, nice. Kozunash actually had a better performance. I mean, obviously, he's still led in four. Um, but the uh, the Wolverines just overall looked like a good, like like the better team. I mean, they were putting on better shot out, better shots, getting more chances. Um, and let's just say this: one word, one or two words, Hudson fashion. Nice. Um, he posted a, um, I think I, I believe he ended posting a five point night. Very good, very good. Um, which 
ties the most points um, in a single game for the Tucson Roadrunners in their history. Ooh, do you know offhand who has that? Um, I do not know a hundred percent offhand. It's okay. Because um, I would guess Dylan Strom. No, I m- might be Dylan Strom. I'm trying to think. No, it's one more recent because I think it was the same game that um uh um I'm trying to think. Michael Carcone got his four goal game. Could it oh, be him? It could be him. I think it, I mean, I <laughs> if think he had I, a four goal game, then just one I mean, assist. I, I think it might have been another person who had all the assists for that game. Mm. That we, we will follow up on that. I was hoping you would know offhand, I, I, but no, I, I, it's, it's really impressive. It's funny because uh, Brett told me because Brett told me he's like, "Oh yeah, this is like the person." I'm like, "Oh, that's right." But I mean, Hudson Fashing. Uh, I thought he looked good in preseason. Um, I didn't necessarily expect him to make the the team this year, but maybe a player to watch out for. Uh, I feel like the Coyotes are going to have a lot of opportunities for the Roadrunners guys. Um, it's a real like, you know, they are going to have their shot probably like three quarters of the way through the year after the trade deadline. Uh, and I think if you have a good season now, that's how you get your shot at the NHL and the big paycheck. Plus, fashing has spent a lot of time with Jay Verde, so like I think all I think a lot of that um, coach player chemistry has helped a lot. Um, yeah. I think that was mentioned too in the press conference, and we can go ahead and play that. Um, uh, it's a very short, very short uh, media availability that uh, we all was able to have with Jay Verde after their six uh, four win over San Diego, and we talk about that. We talk about his um, about Hudson Fashing's performance. So um, let's go ahead and uh, take a listen to that. Yeah, let's go to the clip. You know, last night you had mentioned that you guys had played parts of periods really well and parts of the game really well. It kind of seemed like that happened again tonight, even with the quick start. The positive, a win, a big night for Hudson, but I'm guessing that, you know, that wasn't necessarily the 60 minutes you were totally looking for, despite the resolve that you guys were able to show. Yeah, well, I liked our compete tonight. I think the thing that got us in a little bit of a mess tonight was our discipline. We've talked about that. you got to stay disciplined as a team. We found ourselves in a three-on-five kill again, uh, something you do back-to-back nights. Uh, we like to clean that up. But more importantly, we, we did like our compete. And when you have that work ethic and, and that going, hopefully we get a result like we did tonight. Still seeing some stuff shake itself out on the stat sheet, but potentially a career night stat-wise for Hudson. What can you say about what he was able to do? He was just moving all over the place out there. Yeah, well, I think it's leadership. I think it was a situation where uh, our group of leaders weren't happy with what happened the day before. Uh, they came here tonight. They were ready to play. They did a great job. For him, you know, last year he only only saw the ice seven times last season because of being on the taxi squad and stuff. How big of a deal it is for him to just get his feet moving in the six games so far this season to get to a point like this? I mean, we, it's not like we're surprised by seeing this out of him, but it's just he hasn't been able to do it for a season or so. Yeah, it's something we talked about actually where um, we had a couple conversations. He's like, hey, let me just get my game legs under me. I get used to things moving around me, but... Uh, we did also talk about how much he's worked on his skill during the taxi squad situations. He was excited about using those in different situations. So, um, you know, maybe there are some positives that came out of just playing seven games. Did your guys' relationship develop more last season with you being up there and being able to see him in that environment a little more and knowing him already, obviously, from your time here? Well, we've been here together for a long time. So um, I think we've had a good relationship, obviously, with the taxi squad. We spent a lot of time together. We had a lot of skates, uh, a lot of time in hotels. So um, I think it's just a little better understanding of each other as we progress uh, through. Uh, playing in preservation mode at the start of the second, and then they tied it up, and then you know going into the third, you put another two up. Can you share what the message was in the locker room between those last two periods? Yeah, I think we were doing a lot of good things, and we needed to stay with that. You know, we got away. We got some penalty problems there for a while, but uh, for the most part, a lot of our five-on-five play was was good. And we needed to stay with him, we did. Last one. Oh, 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 last one for me is last night I had asked you kind of about getting some more push out of the veterans, and obviously Hudson, one of those guys. And how do you see? I mean, it's 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 imbalanced because you have a lot more younger guys than veterans. But how important is it? You talked about leadership to have the veterans be the ones to set the tone, like he was able to tonight. I mean, I think he had a plus five, which I know plus minus gets. Uh, 
pushed around, but a plus five angel when you slice it is a, is a heck of a night, and especially out of somebody you consider one of your leaders. Yeah, well, I think it's good for the young guys. You know, like, we come in, we, you know, there's a little bit of a challenge today in terms of what we needed to do to be successful, and um, when the older guys answer that challenge right from the beginning, then everybody else comes along with it. So, Carl, you guys got a chance to take a listen. I mean, obviously, this is my second time listening to it. I was there. Sure. Um, well, uh, first off, I want to say it's funny uh, that the Red Runners are also having discipline issues. That seems to be an <laughs> uh, organizational problem right now. Um, no, um, one of the things that we talked about a lot going into last season was what are you going to do with the taxi squad? Uh, players because you don't necessarily want to put your best players there because even though they may get shots at the NHL, they're not going to get consistent play time. Yeah. So we see that with Hudson Pashing. Um, and I don't think we knew like how long that would take to rebound. Uh, it sounds like it's, uh, you know, hasn't been an issue for him that he was able to you know pick up some good things and is having a good season to start off, which is great to hear. Um, I was definitely very curious to see like what kind of bounce back the the taxi players would have because it was a tough situation for them, um, probably more so than a lot of other positions um, in in hockey. Because at least with the AHL, you were playing uh, yeah. taxi squad. You were just there. You were practicing and maybe drawn in. I think the point of the taxi squad at the time was because we didn't even know if the American Hockey League was going to have a season. It, I think it was that. I think it was just like general, like we don't know travel procedures are going to be. So like you can't yep. risk maybe calling someone up. Um, I kind of like, I didn't mind the idea. I like the teams having like a third goaltender, for example. Uh, I thought that was something that could potentially carry into the year. Cause I think we're going to see more like spreading out of goaltender games. Um I, I wonder if uh, if some of the things that happened during the COVID season are gonna carry over into hockey when next time they talk about like CBAs and that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm sure all that will get discussed. But um, yeah, again, I, th- I thought it was you know overall everything that uh, Verde was interesting. Um, uh, one thing I totally totally almost blanked on. It was actually pretty fun. I should mention um, is the first goal that happened for the road one was actually kind of got credited like it, it, the credit was switched every single time um hudson fashing was credited with it and then they gave it to yanis Mosier, um <laughs> and then they gave it back to fashing with an assist to Mosier because they didn't know if fashing got the uh tipped it in um, interesting so it went back and forth but here's the funny thing is during that time we did not know if fashion really got the goal and fashion got the third goal or the third goal, people started throwing hats in there. And then we're talking to like, do people know that there's a dispute of whether or not he actually got it in? <laughs> um, I mean, hat tricks and the throwing the hats on the ice. They're more about uh, raw emotion than logic. Yeah. So, um, but like I would be there checking hats. He ended, he did end up getting credit at the hat trick, um, and we even asked him to about it too. He we he, he um the first question we I think the first question we asked him was so that first goal was that really you? And he's like, yeah, yeah I got a little stick, I I got a stick on it, and I'm like, all right, that that settles it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially since uh, I think like in general the thing we would expect for a hockey player uh, to say would be like, no, it wasn't me. I don't think so. Like yeah, if they. He- not really thought that so yeah because he he even said he's like it's like i even went up to, i even went at the jj at the end and i was just like it's, it's like sorry dude i wish like that that could have been yours but like it just hit my stick <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i mean it, it's it's see like if fans had waited to see if it was actually going to be credited to him then they they would have missed that hat trick moment you gotta go with just the raw emotions Exactly. It was just fu- it was just funny that I, I I felt like I had to mention all of that. But again, really great performance yeah. from Hudson Fashing. And again, you want to see that out of a leader, someone who's been at the Road Runners for quite a bit, um, and missed quite a bit of time last year, as we heard from the press conference. He only played seven games last year total versus already six games in this season so far this year. So, yeah, good big st- difference. 
big difference. And that, I mean, obviously you can tell he's got, he's got his legs under, under him now. Yep. Definitely. But anyways, uh, Tucson Roadrunners are now trying to see the, what their record is. They are, uh, three and three to start the season, six games into the year. Um, so that's good stuff. They will be on the road now to uh, this weekend in Henderson to play the Henderson Silver Knights before coming back for the Ontario Reign, which I heard uh, we have. There's some uh, podcast listeners who said that they are coming down. Um, nice. Feel free, feel free to say hi to me. I'm in the press box area. We're not press box area, but I'm in the press area. Um, you'll know where to find me if you want to say hi. It's a very small arena. Uh, I've been there yeah. a couple times. It's hard to get lost anyway. It is hard to get lost. Um, but we still got more to get to on this episode. We are going to talk about what's next coming up up this week. We got a little mini preview of the next game as well as just maybe anything else that we got to talk about for the Coyotes in the upcoming week. All of that in just a sec. But first, I want to tell you guys about Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar in the world, did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There is something for everyone. When you talk to a Built Bar fan, they are definitely passionate about their favorites. From flavors ranging from mint brownie to strawberry, cookies and cream to German chocolate, and even some uh, limited time ones like paranormal pumpkin or churro puff or birthday cake. You literally think you can think what. Or whatever you might think in your head, there might be a certain flavor. They got it. It's absolutely amazing. Um, but don't just take my word for it. Just take it, check it out yourself. See all the uh, the flavors out there and see how healthy they are. And I can tell you right now, they are um, high in protein, low in calories, low in sugar, low in carbs, all the things you want out of a good protein bar and especially good for those who are looking for a keto-friendly snack. Um, but again, if you go to Built.com, you can check it out yourself. And while you're there, if you want to make an order, Use the promo code LOCKED15 so you can get 15% off your next order. Once again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Okay, so now let's uh, go ahead and take a look forward. Once again, Robin Leano, Carl Pavlik. As we, uh, the Coyotes now have, how many games this week? Uh, Two? Two this week. Two this week. They got the Philadelphia Flyers uh tomorrow and then the anaheim ducks on friday um actually so, th- three this week if you count the kraken on saturday okay so we have the kraken on saturday as well um wow so, back to back in one away one home oh my god yeah this, uh the road trip continues uh the road trip continues even when you're home uh because that's not going to be a great one. Luckily, like it'll be like a quick flight over. Um, so it's going to be uh, probably like the easiest part of the road trip so far, uh, which is saying something because I don't think the Flyers are going to be an easy game. Uh, and the Ducks, I think, are probably just going to give the Coyotes problems just because it's going to be whiplash going from playing the Lightning last week to playing the Ducks. Yeah, it's going to be quite the difference. Um, but let's take a at least somewhat a focus on tomorrow because that's the game that's the closest to us. They face the Philadelphia Flyers. And I was telling you this, Carl, before we went to record, I really, really hope the Philadelphia Flyers start Martin Jones because yeah. uh, Carter. if Carter Hart's starting, Coyotes are going to lose. If Martin Jones is starting, Coyotes have a chance. Yeah, uh, it would be nice to get like a backup goaltender uh, facing off against, like at least like have like someone the Coyotes can score. Uh, I think that if the Coyotes break through and get get a couple goals going, they'll like definitely be a more confident team. They'll be able to kind of like claim the victory. But if they run into like a starter or like a hot goaltender, that's gonna be a lot harder. Um, I think a big thing that they need to do is definitely like get something going on the power play. We didn't see any power play goals. Um, their penalty kill has improved, but they still need to work on their power play. Um, yeah, absolutely. There is quite a bit to um, <laughs> think about that. I think yeah, Coyotes, special teams, they have to fix. Um, 
And one thing I will mention too is uh, we talked about play- going up against former team teammates and former players who were part of their who were part of the Coyotes in the past. Um, we couldn't say that about yesterday's game when they were playing the Hurricanes because Antti Ranta wasn't in net. Yeah. Um, but we will be able to say that in tomorrow's game because Keith Yandel will be. Well- yeah, uh, Yandel on his Ironman streak, um, he has had uh, five assists on the season in seven games. Pretty impressive numbers. Uh, the Coyotes did face a few former Coyotes against the Panthers. Uh, Derek Stepan, uh, Tony D'Angelo, and Jordan Martinuk, but they mostly kept them off the score sheet, except for D'Angelo with the primary assist. Hopefully they can keep Yandel off the score sheet because... Like, it really seems like the former Coyotes player has been the killer this year. Uh, just revenge of the former players. Oh, man. it's That's the way it goes, right? That's just the yeah. way it has to be. Yeah. And also, uh, I almost forgot Tony D'Angelo was a, was, was a Coyote. Like, or, Yeah. It, it didn't last long. And that was just... Because uh, that was the uh, Derek Stepan anti Ranta trade. And I think the bigger thing was was probably his. Uh, we sent over the first round pick that like D'Angelo's time with the the Coyotes is pretty uh, short, and he was going by Anthony D'Angelo at the time, which always throws people. Maybe that be maybe that that could be why I wouldn't I wasn't thinking about it. And also like a lot of his a lot of the stuff that was done like a lot of his uh, controversies during his time with with the uh, Rangers. So yeah. Uh, Tony D'Angelo's controversies came before and after the coyotes. The thing that gets mentioned is he got a abusing the officials penalty <laughs> oh, uh, with the coyotes. I think in like his third game, uh, like it was something ridiculous. Um, but yeah, no, um, the flyers, uh, they're going to be better than the Coyotes this year, but I think that a big thing, like if Arizona can not take so many penalties, if they can stay out of the box for once, if they could actually play like five on five for a full period, I think that would go a long way with helping them. I think that's their biggest issue right now. Yeah. Obviously we can't ask for a full 60 minute game at this point. Cause we know they're just not going to give it to us um, yeah. based on how they played this so far in the first nine games. It's just not going to be, it's just not going to work that way. Yeah. There's still a, a team that's still very fresh. Uh, they need to work a lot of things out. Like playing full 60 minutes of hockey is, is tough for teams that have known each other for years. Yep. Um, before we close things out, is there anything that, uh, um, as in this early preview segment that you want to say you want to see from Arizona in tomorrow's uh, game? See, I, I'm just going to say this. Uh, I'm just frustrated we didn't get to have the Philadelphia game on Halloween because then we could have saw Gritty do some fun stuff. Uh, I'm mostly looking for Gritty shenanigans. Uh, uh, <laughs> but no, uh, I think an important thing for the Coyotes is just going to be scoring early again. Uh, I liked that they got an early goal from Christian Fisher. I think that that is going to be key for them getting success, like taking a game early and then just keeping, keeping work from there uh, and don't fall back. Yeah. That, that was a huge part getting the, uh, getting off to that uh, early lead. And if they can do that, maybe they, they just overall play a better game. And obviously it was harder against Carolina. Maybe it might work against Philadelphia. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Carolina is the only undefeated team for a reason. Um, they were coming hard, so like if they've been up against really tough competition, like they have been, maybe they can take what they've learned against the Flyers and catch them by surprise. Absolutely, but uh, that's going to be all the thoughts that we're going to have for today's episode. So we'll go ahead and close things off. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review. We are available uh, everywhere you get your podcasts. Like again, so review, like, subscribe. Yeah, yet to already um check be sure to check us out on youtube um because we have uh, a lot of video episodes being pushed post there as well so all fun stuff um don't forget to interact with us on social media as well we are at lo underscore coyotes um 
I am personally at Robin underscore Leano. That's R O B Y N underscore L E A N O. Carl Pavlik is at Carl Pavlik F F H. You can interact with us, ask any questions. We might answer them on a future episode of the podcast. Also, be sure to check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash locked on coyotes. We just launched that page. Um, you can even get um, our uh, podcasts. Um, you can subscribe to the ep- to the podcast through there as well. So if, you, if you're a person who frequents Facebook, be sure to check that out as well. Anyways, thanks everyone for joining today's episode. Ho- uh, hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you guys are staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on.